Ah! Jesus! It's phenomenal. Probably every one of these stanchions need to come up. There's a 22 Magnum. God bless America. Can I have that? There's a roll top desk. I dance like a white dude. That's all right. Welcome back to another week on the Sirens Log. Thank you for all of our new subscribers. We're so excited to have you here and we know our last video did really well and you guys really liked the boat. I say that, but it seems like most of you said absolute pass, don't buy the boat. And the rest of you that said that we should make an offer agreed that we should make an offer under $10,000. Well, we did make an offer and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But first of all, please go hit the subscribe button and check out some of our last few videos uh we're we're looking for a boat you guys and i mean this is our process and we want to share it with you also we have patreon set up for you guys now too there's different levels we'll be sharing insider information we have a few patreons already thank you to those guys and uh they already know what's going on the link is in the description and um follow us over there as well so we did we put in an offer and and we heard everything that you guys said and it didn't scare us away so we did listen, we did listen, but it didn't scare us away. We want to share, I think, who we are first. As far as my experience on boats, my first job at 11 years old was a boat rental company. Worked there for three or four years, learned how to do fiberglass work, maintenance on engines, drive boats. Uh, my father is a fishing guide. He's been a fishing guide since I was a small child, so I grew up around boats and in the charter industry. Uh, right out of high school, got a job at Seto, worked for them for a while, uh, BP oil spill rolled around, ended up getting a job uh, working on ocean going tugs, crew boats, supply boats, worked my way up there. I have worked every facet of the commercial side of the marine industry. I can do a lot. A lot of this stuff on the sailboats is new to me, um, and I don't think it's anything I couldn't handle. Uh, because of all my experience, I do have a lot of contacts that are boat rights and masters of crafts and been there, done that, and that's who and I am. And you are currently a fishing guide and uh, have been for many years. <laughs> I've been doing it 20 years. Currently, I do that. I work on a dive boat just for, it's fun. I do freelance captain work. Um, mechanical work. I do a lot of marine mechanic owned a pontoon rental company of my own for a while. Michael took that away from me. Uh, and we still have two small boats. We do. We've so. got two small boats. I've owned as many as nine boats at one time. You guys need to understand, when we're looking at this boat, I don't know anybody that owns a boat that's not upside down in their boat when they figure out their time, maintenance, upkeep, fixing things that break. There are holes in the water you throw money into. You do this because you love them. Um, that's that's how that's me so my experience <laughs> um, and my background with with boats is you know aside from a childhood of, of fishing and that kind of thing and, and growing up with two boats um, that we were out on all the time um, I uh, I went to MPT in Fort Lauderdale Florida I have a lot of my training from there I was a deckhand stewardess captain's assistant mate I was all sorts of things uh, in the yachting industry out of Fort Lauderdale but I did I did travel around. I've definitely crewed on several sailboats, um, even one wooden boat, the Fritz Jafice, the RS-40, um, sailed the eastern seaboard uh, to up north and worked on that boat, worked on that boat again in England, redid some wiring, some woodwork, lots of, you know, just a lot of work, a lot of, uh, of refit work on that one. I've worked on yachts where I've done the same thing, where I've spent months in engine rooms, um, it's just getting dirty and, and grinding away at gunk on metal and things like this. We are no stranger to hard work on boats. I can promise you that. I've I've overseen multi-million dollar uh, mega yacht refits. Actually, um, I I owned a small sailboat. I've I mean I don't consider myself a sailor, but um, 
yeah, we're, we're no stranger to the work. I'm currently a yacht broker in Panama City, and um, yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not new to this, and we're not new to hard work, so um, we're not completely, uh, you know, a lot of you said to run, but I, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't, we didn't run, <laughs> sorry. She's pretty boat. she can't come back. So when I looked in sold boats through my brokerage systems, um, there's really, there aren't very many of these left and it is a Michelson 50, it's a 1987, only 18 were made and it looks like everyone that's sold within the last 20 years has sold from anywhere from 200,000 to over 300,000. Granted some of those were 20 years ago and maybe they weren't in the same shape that they may be in today. When you think of a Michelson 50, you think of a Formosa 51 or a Hudson Force 50 or maybe even a Vagabond 47. So what we know about Formosas is not everything that came out of the Formosa shipyard was top quality. I'm not saying that they're not great boats. We love them and we'd love to have one. But I believe that these boats were built a little bit better than the things that came out of the Formosa shipyard. This Michelson actually has the solid wood interior much like the Vagabonds do. And I'm not saying that it holds its value because of that, but that might be one indication that these boats are built a little bit better. Now, Michelson is actually out of San Diego, even though the boats were built in Taiwan. And I was able to get in touch with the owners of Michelson, and I got a little bit of information about the designer. I've already forgotten his name, so this is it. And if anybody can tell me where this man is right now, please let me know. We would love to talk to him, and we would love to know so much more about this boat, and maybe he still has some old specs. So if you can get in touch with him, or if you know how we can get in touch with him, please let us know where we can find him. I've, last I've heard, he was in San Diego somewhere, so. We have looked at other boats. We looked at a Vagabond 42 over in Mobile? Pensacola. Pensacola, close enough. And we do have some clips of that. Uh, you want to tell them about the boat? Yeah, so I don't have my notes in front of me, but what I can tell you about that boat is that it had a lot of interior rot and wood that needed to come out, and it was leaking in multiple areas, which these aren't things that really scare us. I mean, these are things that are common on this style of boat, so it's you, you kind of expect it going in. In fact, if it doesn't have any rot, that's great. Like, <laughs> that's insane, right? But this boat in particular had the original teak deck, and they had actually sealed it up with a three-part epoxy uh, called, what was it called? I don't like remember. The Aqua Stop or, or something? Hydro Stop. Hydro Stop. Hydro Stop. Yacht Broker said it was a roofing deal. Okay, so yeah, it was something that people don't really cover their teak decks with. Or maybe they do and we're just out of the No, I don't think they do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think anybody should ever be painting their teak deck with anything like, like anything like this. I just, it's blasphemy. Don't do it. But they did it. And they did it because the teak deck was leaky, which they all do over time. But this is the original teak deck, so here's the deal with that. If you are buying an old boat like this, and it still has the original teak deck, that teak deck is done. That teak deck needs to come off the boat. But it's not as simple as taking the teak deck off the boat. Now you have to deal with what's below it. And you can be guaranteed that there is going to be wet wood and rot, and you're going to have fiberglass work. A lot of screw holes. Yeah, you have all it's these screw be holes. In, There's soft a lot spots. to do. So we turned that one down. Yeah, we, we ended up not buying that because by the time we bought the boat and did that work, we would be in at least a hundred thousand dollars. And for a hundred thousand dollars we feel like we can do a lot more. So we didn't we didn't buy that one. So when we're looking at these kinds of boats, we are looking for something where the original teak deck is already gone and they've already done that work. And that if we want to come back and put a teak deck on it later, we can, and it'll be a new teak deck. And it will last for many years, but the original teak deck has already been through those years. So we would rather not have to deal with that. This one has already been done, which is amazing. It does have water coming in through all the fittings, which needs to be dealt with. It's just rebedding. But it's, at least it's not ripping up the entire deck, thank God. So we're good there. Um... What else did we look at? Uh, we looked at a CT-54 in St. Augustine last year, and I like that boat, and I wish we had bought it. Yeah, that <laughs> boat was under 100000 and it was really ready to go. We actually 
we met with the broker and we met with the owner of the boat and he had done a lot of work to the boat he had maintained it very well um, and the deck was leaking and he had just done some serious repairs on the deck and it looked and it felt like that guy had really tried to maintain this boat and it was just time to let it go but the boat was ready to go I mean there's definitely things that we would have done to the boat to make it our own and to make it better maybe but, but we could have sailed it from St. Augustine back to Panama City immediately. no problem immediately yeah no problem and just we could have moved on to it immediately and lived on it so that was a good deal that one got away from us and then we looked at CT-54 which y'all have seen the video of in Dolphin Island now that one is a little bit more uh, it's in the middle of a refit it's ultimately going to sell for 200000 when the refit is complete. We have the option, we still have the option, of buying that boat and doing the rest of the refit ourselves. But our only problem with that one is we would still be paying a significant amount for the boat and we may not have enough right now to really finish out the boat. It's a brand new boat from Waterline Down. We're talking yeah. rebuilt engines, rebuilt it's not generator, a uh, prop shafts, packing. You can eat out of the bilge. He has repainted, redone, refixed, new through holes. He means to turn this into a $250,000, $300,000 boat. Yeah, definitely. It's not a bad option for us. It really isn't. Um, I, I think it would be okay for chartering, but the two forward cabins are both single berth cabins. So I don't love that because we know that we'll have friends come on the boat who are couples and they'll help us do long passages and we want them to have you know we want them to enjoy their stay and to have a berth that fits them that boat doesn't really allow for that it also wouldn't be ideal if we did overnight charters with couples because there's not a berth for a couple unless we put them in the aft cabin which is totally fine but now we don't have anywhere to sleep it just doesn't feel like the right layout when I'm looking at these boats I go on feel and I also go on, you know, the, the boat and the mechanics of it and how much work is it going to take to bring it back. But one of the most important factors for me personally is do I like the boat? I'm not going to go buy a boat because it makes sense if I don't really like it. That doesn't make any sense to me. I want to know first, is this the boat that I want? If this boat was in mint condition, would I want it forever? And would I want to raise a family on it? Would I want to charter it? Would I want to live on it? Do I want to travel on it? Do I want to circumnavigate the globe on it? And the answer for this boat is yes. It's this right is boat. the boat it's right home, that I want to do that on. Right layout. Yeah. It's also my job to beat these boats into pull, which she likes. So of course. And that has to happen. Anybody getting jaded, it's my job to play devil's advocate. So if you see me in videos just negative beating down the boat, that is my job. <laughs> we have to be realistic. And a lot of you said, okay, it wasn't a lot of you, but a few of you said, oh, you're being so negative about the boat. No, we're not. We're being real because we're pointing out everything that we would have to do to make this boat work for us. And then we have to figure out what will that cost us? And we know it's a lot, but we, we have some money sitting aside to do this with, but it probably isn't enough to do the whole project. And we really have to take that into consideration moving forward because if we pay a hundred thousand for a boat that still needs work well guess what we we don't have the money to do that work we just bought the boat and now it's gonna sit and we can't pay the shipyard so we need to be very careful how we do this this boat may have been an opportunity to get into the boat really cheap get it fixed up get it in the water get it seaworthy get it seaworthy and then use the rest of that money to you know to fix the boat and then, of course, we'll run out of money. Don't, doesn't everybody? I mean, but we have but it, jobs. But we have jobs, <laughs> and we have time to make the rest of the money to make the boat complete and the way that we want it. Maybe new mass, new rigging, new sails. That's, I mean, it, it kind of needs it. So, you know, we have time. That's the point. And if we get a good deal on the boat, we can do that. We can totally do that. That's realistic. But if we spend too much up front, we're not going to be able to do it. So, we know the boat has value. We know it's worth more than 10 grand as it sits, but we also know that a boat in a situation like this, it's, you know, if it's bank owned and they need to get rid of it, then, you know, you can get things for really, really cheap like that. And, and you guys know that. You said it in the comments in the last video. We know that as well. But this boat is in a little bit of a situation. 
So the boat isn't 100% owned by the bank. I don't understand the details, and frankly, it's none of my business at this point. It's still in the guy's name, and the bank has started to do some work to the boat because they haven't called it a loss yet. So the bank is actually putting a lot of money into this boat. It's been sitting on the hard for a year and a half. The bank has paid for that. They got a recent survey that put it at $130,000. So the bank is under the impression that the boat is worth $130,000, the way it sits, even though none of the systems were tested in that survey. So right now, the bank is actually planning to put the boat back in the water, and I know it needs some work down here. Can't go back in the water right now, but I'm thinking, I think the bank's out of Texas, unless it's on the coast of Texas, somebody in like, a bank in somebody sitting at a desk in Dallas I don't think they they get the scope of what this boat needs no. before it sat in, the, sat in the water safely but the plan is to get this boat back in the water next week and I gotta be honest uh, we're pretty nervous we're pretty nervous about that because this could be our future boat and it's been drying out for a year and a half and now it's gonna go back in the water and that's just going to complicate things if they're not done on this hull, even though we're hearing that they are going to finish some work to the hull, but, but not the through holes. Um, I think they're just going to patch, patch the rudder and call it done. So that's our concern right now is, you know, they're going to get all these things wet. So we're worried about them fixing everything on the bottom before it gets wet because now it needs to dry out again. But not only that, here's the other part of this. They're going to get it running and they're going to start testing systems. When they start testing systems, one of two things are going to happen. The systems aren't going to work for them and they're going to realize that they got to put more money into it or the systems are going to work for them and they're going to say, cool, let's sell it for 130000 because these systems work. They did get the generator and the engine running on the hard, so we do know now that the generator and the engine do work. The boat may be completely out of our budget if this goes the way they want it to go. If all the systems work, then they're going to charge a lot more for the boat and we're probably not going to be able to afford it. That's where we are right now with it and um, we want to talk to you guys about the offer that we put in and then we're going to, I guess, go look at other boats and we're going to keep looking. We know there's some things online. Uh, maybe, maybe we go to South Florida. Maybe we go to Maine. I don't know yet. There's a boat here in town I definitely want to look at seriously. And what is that? Marine Trader. The Marine Trader. I want to go look at the Marine Trader seriously. Okay. <laughs> Do you guys want to see a Marine Trader? I like power boats also. <laughs> so it's nice to just get where you're going instead of tacking. Just go straight yeah. to the wind. Now, I don't think we'd be circumnavigating on a Marine Trader because that's not a sailboat. Um, there is an Island Trader, which is a sailboat version, down in Fort Pierce, I think, right now. look at that. We're a little bit interested in that. It's a good price. Probably needs a lot, but, you know, they're good boats. Um, but, yeah, maybe maybe next week we look at the Marine Trader and we, we switch this over to Powerboat. I'm not really in favor of that. That's kind of his thing. But, hey, you know, we'll look. It's a Taiwan build. They're See, beautiful. It's different. It's basically a winky tiki with out sails without sales yeah and see more charter potential with it yeah maybe see all different kinds of things we can do and offer and then still do overnight charters on it yeah especially if we're down in uh, Virgin Islands and so forth because you're just island hopping right around the corner yeah uh, it's a nice boat okay so let's talk about this offer that we put in Thirty thousand, and we were laughed at. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, they would not even entertain. It was a chuckle. Uh, these people want one hundred thirty thousand dollars, probably, for this boat. Yeah. Minimum. Um, they're not backing off that. Maybe someone who doesn't know what they're looking at will walk in here and say, "Oh, it's I'll give you a hundred thousand for that," but gotta, it's not going to be us. Let's tell you that. They got to fix that mast step and put some sails on it. Yeah. Minimum. Now, if they can do some of this work and they can get all of the systems fixed, hey, you know what? They can make more. That's for sure. And good for them. Yeah. In fact, we may even give them more if they can prove. And one of our 
one of our comments said this. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, yes. It was genius. This guy's got this guy's thinking. One of the comments said that we should do a contract with the bank that we would give them X amount if they could prove that all of the systems work. And that's that's really fair. That's really, really fair because the truth is we can pay more than 30000 It's just we need to know what we're getting, you know. Uh, if we offer seventy-five, dollars I want to make sure that we're getting $75,000 worth of boat. I mean, that's fair, right? So if we were to put in another contract, maybe not right away, maybe maybe early next year, let them, let them stew on it a little bit, um, give, them, give them a chance to get these systems working, and we do a contract that says... We'll give you seventy-five thousand if the generator works, the engine works, the autopilot works, um, the electrical system isn't burning up shore power cords, the electrolysis is taken care of. You know, um, the mass step we can do ourselves. I, I know they're not going to do everything. They're not. But if they can prove what they assume already works, what they're already looking at and saying, well, the boat has value because of these systems. Okay, prove they work. Prove they work. And we'll pay for that. But we're not going to pay for sales when it needs to do sales. We're not going to pay for a boat that needs a new rudder. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah, that, that's a really smart idea. And it's probably something that if we are if we haven't found the boat that we want um, in a few months, we, we very well may circle back and do something like that. That's a really good idea. I'm talking about proving the engine works. And yeah, it runs, but it needs rebuild. Nah. Yeah, we want oil samples. We want, I want a, a survey. Compression and leak down test. I want to know what shape those rings are in. Yeah. So, I guess all we can do now is keep looking at more boats. What do you guys want to see? We know some of you have said that there's some boats up along the East Coast that you guys want to see. We may go look at them. Yeah, you guys. Y'all are out in the great big world. Uh, if you see some links to some boats uh, we're looking for 47 foot plus boats uh, 47 to 54 roughly um, if we're you guys, very picky <laughs> I, I will admit and it's me that's picky it's not him if you guys know uh, I'd love a Shannon <laughs> <laughs> I would love a Shannon she just as much wants a Will, William Garden yeah uh, we're looking just classic full kill uh, catch is the dream. Doesn't have to be. This Doesn't is a slip, have to so. be. But if you guys know about them, put the links below. If you see one in your local marina with a for sale sign that's not listed, if you don't mind uh, commenting or emailing us, you know, a, a phone number or a picture of the boat or so forth, uh, we do have travel plans later this year, early next year, and part of those up. plans are going and looking at boats. Yep. A lot of it. So, please, <laughs> please help us there. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe. And and in the description is our Patreon information. Um, yeah, just go check it out. Uh, our Patreons always know the the updates with this stuff. So, if you want the updates faster on what we're doing, and you want to know what we're doing just in our day to day. That's that's where that stuff is. Uh, our Patreons already knew that we had offered thirty thousand several days ago so uh i apologize i've been sick for over a month <laughs> are you guys sick too because it seems like everybody is sick lately I've this is just crazy weeks. it's crazy i was sick for two days <laughs> he had a high fever for like two it. days and it was over but to be fair we adopted this dog the dog came home with kennel cough got me sick i got the dog on antibiotics and steroids and then he got sick and i was still sick the dog got better and then I was still sick, and then I got the dog sick again. She was running a low-grade fever. I burned, my body said, burn it out. Mine is not <laughs> burning anything out. I've, I've only shown a mild fever like one time for like an hour. I don't know. It's like, I have autoimmune issues anyway, but like my body's not, <laughs> it's not even trying to get rid of it. It's just like, oh, cool. We got this like cool new virus in here that we live with now. Yay. <laughs> so, um, I also apologize for the way that I'm dressed. Um. Hal told me that I look like an elitist skier from Colorado. Vale. In particular. Is this Vale? I have no idea. I don't think so. I love picking on this woman. She takes it way too serious sometimes. And that's even it's better. really nice though. It is. It's soft as nice. poofy. 
TJ Maxx, y'all. No animals were killed in the making of this? No. No, they weren't. It's not real leather, but I, I like my real leather, but this just feels so good. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. So, thank you guys for watching. Uh, hey, you know what? Let us know what you want to see. Let's go see it. Like, so. subscribe, comment below. Thank you to our new Patreon. We will flash them on the screen. And thank y'all for joining the ride. I'm going to be honest. I could not believe how the response to this video and how many people followed along. All the comments, good, bad, mean, happy, supportive. Thank you. Uh, we appreciate hey, it. Hey, engagement is... What do they say? say? Even bad publicity is good publicity or something? That's right. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Even bad comments are... They're numbers, y'all. Yeah, if we get... Post us a bad comment. <laughs> if we get ragged out too much, we'll just uh, fake our deaths and move, uh, move to, like, Molly. It's plastic surgery. Dye our hair. I'll, wow. I just got to shave my beard. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next week or on Patreon. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, I'm not, but you know, whatever. See you guys next week. Bye. Bye.